Hey, my name is Steve from Recycled Cycles in Seattle. I'm coming to you from my garage hidden in the hills of Kenmore. Today I want to show you how to change a flat tire on your bicycle. It can happen anytime, you can't predict it, but it's something that's important for every uh, rider to know how to do. So first things first, um, I'm going to show you how to get the wheel off the bike, which is something that people have a, have a problem with. It's a, it's, it's an opportunity to get a little greasy, but it, it's definitely easy to do. So this is a road bike, a bike that a lot of people use for events like the Bike MS or the STP or for even commuting to work. It's a great exercise tool. So when you go to change a flat tire in the rear of one of these bicycles, there's a few things to deal with. You have the chain and the derailleur and you have the rear brake. In order to get the wheel out, you have to release the quick release on the brake to allow the tire to pass to go past the brake pads. Right now, they would get hung up on the brake pads because they're too close to the rim. So this is your quick release lever on your brake. You flip that up and it makes the brake pads wider. So now your tire will pass through the brake as you take your wheel off. And the next thing to think about is where your chain is in relation to the rear cassette. In order to make the whole process easier, you want to shift your bicycle's gears to the smallest cog. And that's easily done by lifting the bicycle up, shifting the gears all the way as if you're going to your fastest gear and giving it a quick pedal. So now we're in the smallest cog and the derailleur is all the way out. So this will allow the cassette to clear the frame. All right, so now we've got the brake open, the chain in the smallest cog. Now it's time to take the wheel off. And we're going to use the quick release to, to do that, but first I want to explain how this works. The quick release is a mechanism that is actually a, a cam. You can see that move back and forth. So when it's closed, it's tight, holding the wheel in place. And when you open it, it opens just enough to allow the wheel to come out. If we look at this wheel here, I can demonstrate how it goes. Watch this side. How it goes in and out. And that's tightening and that's loosening. A lot of people are confused about how quick releases work and to understand how they work makes it a lot easier to understand how to tighten them up. So now we're going to remove the back wheel. So in order to do that we're going to operate the quick release. Let's slide over here. So if, when I flip this lever down I'm opening the cam up so now the wheel will be loose in the frame. I can lift the bicycle up Pull the derailleur back and see the wheel come right out. Now the tire is off, we're going to go ahead and set our bicycle down carefully, being careful not to damage the rear derailleur. So now we have the wheel off the bike, flat tire, we're getting ready to change it. But first I want to show you the tools you're going to need to do it. Tire levers allow us to get the, wheel, the tire off of the rim. This is a Presta valve adapter that you might need to use on a skinnier European style valve called Presta valves. It threads on to the top and it allows you to use any kind of hand pump uh, or Schrader valve or Presta valve pump. Here's my metal from the bike MS 150 years ago, 2006. Anyway, always carry a spare tube with you. Patch kits are cool, but if you have a spare tube, you know that the tube is in good shape and will be reliable. Pumps on your bike, these are great uh, to get yourself back up on the road. They come in all shapes and sizes. So a seat bag is important to have with you on the bike rides because it's going to contain everything you're going to need to change your flat tire. So as we open it up, you're going to find in my kit a patch kit, a multi-tool, Dig in here, there's a tire lever and a little pump. Most importantly, you'll have a spare tube. It's important to carry a spare tube that's in good shape because if you use a patch kit on a tube to patch a hole, all you're going to remember or be worried about as you're finishing your ride is whether or not that patch is holding. So I always use a new tube and keep a fresh tube with me. Hydration is important. So a couple water balls, water bottle cage, and then maybe keep this at your campsite or at your house to keep your chain lubed. And then lastly, the floor pump. 
This is an important tool because it allows you to bring your tires up to the maximum inflation most need, which is around 90 to 100 pounds. It's a very important tool. So there you have it. There's everything you'll need to do your, uh, to keep your bike rolling and change a flat tire on the side of the road. All right, so now it's time to get into changing the tire. I always start at the valve core, the valve here, as my reference point to taking things off. And you can see the tire is now a bit looser on the rim. Take a tire lever and put it underneath the bead of the tire. The bead is a piece of wire that holds the tire onto the rim. And bracing the wheel, pull that towards you, and you see that we're taking the first bead off of the rim. So now your tube is exposed. Now I like to take the tube out on its own. You can't damage it because it's already got a hole in it somewhere. And at this point you should be able to, just with your hands, no tire lever needed, pull the second bead off of the rim. And there you have your wheel, your tire, whoopsies, your tire, and your dead tube. All right, so now it's time to put everything back together. I always like to use a new tube because I can guarantee that the tube is going to hold the air. Um, the only thing worse than changing a flat tire on the side of the road with trucks passing you at 70 miles an hour is doing it twice. So I always like to run my hands through the tire to make sure that any debris that poked through the skin of the tire, like a thorn or a piece of metal, isn't still in there. And if you do find something, you can usually just take your fingernail or just to check, make sure it doesn't go all the way through. That's just a little pebble there, no big deal. So now I know when I put my new tube in this tire, I've got a new tube, doesn't have any holes in it, doesn't have any patches on it, I've got a tire that doesn't have a thorn or a piece of metal that's going to puncture my new tube. So now we're going to go through the process of putting this all back together. So the first thing you do is take your new tube and you're going to want to inflate it just enough to give it shape. So we're going to open up the little valve at the top here and, this, and slide our pump onto it. Okay. And now we're just going to inflate it. Not to put a lot of pressure in it, but just to get it round like it's going to be when it's inside the tire. Okay, so it's got its shape and it's not, there's not a lot of pressure in there. So now we're going to take this tube and put it inside of our tire. So I'm going to bring the tire down. I like to do it using the floor as my additional hand. And I'm just going to put the tube inside tire like that and let it rest just inside the casing of the tire. Okay and now we have, remember our, this is our first bead, there's our tube, there's our second bead and always start with the valve. So we're going to grab our rim and again I like to use the floor as my additional hand. Find the valve hole and you want to put the valve through a hole, sorry, and then the first bead onto the rim. You still have your second bead off and you have your tube and now you're going to go around and with your thumbs work the first bead onto the rim. Oops. Okay, I'm just using my thumbs pushing up on it. Okay, so now the first bead is on the rim. And now, starting back at your valve hole, you're going to just push the tube and center it over the rim. Okay, so now your tube is in position. The last bead is ready to go on the tire. So again, I'm going to get back to the top, start at my reference point, and work the bead back onto the rim. If it's tough to get it started here, sometimes you have to push up on your valve to let the bead slip into its position. But now you go around with your palms, just part of your hand, 
and work the bead back onto the rim. And when it gets to this point, sometimes it gets kind of tight and it's helpful to let a little air out of your tube. Now this will just go on. Voila! All right, so now we've got it all inflated, ready to go. We're going to install it on the bike. Okay, so we're going to insert the wheel back into the frame. Then we have our first cog here. That's where we're going to set the chain right on top of the cog. Then you, you tighten up your cam, your quick release, tightening up that cam. Then you go up here to your brake quick release and you tighten that back up. Make sure your brake is centered. Now you're back in the ride.